Welcome to the Black Violin Masterclass Series. Uh, I'm Kev Marcus. I am Will Baptiste. Happy to be with you. Hopefully everybody is happy and healthy, doing what they can to uh, to stay creative during this time. Eh? You know, just figure out a way to always use this time and use these moments to uh, constantly better yourself and always try to think forward and um, and make this time useful, you know? All right, but you I doing think, a lot, uh, You doing a lot of practicing? Doing a whole lot of... <laughs> Diaper changing, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> trying to trying to squeeze in a few uh few thirty minutes here and there uh, practice and I think it's uh it's healthy. Just do it man. If you have time, if you're younger, do it now, because when you get older, like me, and have kids, you're gonna have a lot of time. So get your practice in now. <laughs> yeah. So um welcome again. Thank you guys for coming in and tuning in. Uh thank you for everyone that tuned in uh to our live concert this Sunday. We did an Easter Sunday concert in the garden. It was really, really, really beautiful, dope. Yeah. It was a beautiful day and um so many people, you know, came out and supported. Uh well not came out and supported, but virtually supported. Right. Um and we were really thankful for, for everyone that that spent their Easter uh, Easter su- uh, Sundays with us. So right. um thank you, thank you, thank you for that. It was um really a great outpouring of support, I thought. It was a lot of uh really great positive feedback um just people are just really appreciative of us just performing doing yeah. something you know and and this is what we do this is what we love doing man um you know if you've ever s- seen a black violin show man this is what we love doing performing so to be able to do that and um bring some light into this these dark trying times is nothing this is what we do you know so um we're, we're just grateful that you guys can receive it as such receive it as us give it back and and you guys loved it, man. And we thank you guys for even coming through and tuning in, you know? Yeah. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. That was awesome. Um, we hope to do another one probably in a couple of weeks. So stay tuned and we'll announce and maybe just a completely different vibe. We'll play. I don't know. We, we, have, we haven't talked about it yet, but we want to do something like completely different. So it's just a different experience. So if you did see it a uh, couple more weeks, we're going to do it again in a completely different way. So. Uh, stay tuned. A uh, couple announcements. Uh, the Masterclass series, this series, we were doing it. Um, the plan was to do it twice a week, but we decided to do it once a week. And we're just going to combine the classes. So jump training and composition classes now moving forward Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Uh, live, of course, you know, same questions, you know, super interactive. So we want you guys to tune in live. If you miss it live, it's going to live on YouTube. So you can check it out there, too. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, definitely thank you guys for you know, coming out on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Uh, after the session, you could check out www.blackviolin.net forward slash masterclass uh, for additional resources. So we don't quite know exactly how every masterclass goes. We have sort of an idea of what we want. But after it's done, you know, um, Don Hicks, who is a teacher here uh, in South Florida, he always helps us out and puts some really awesome resources. Shout out to links. Don Hicks. Um, and yeah, so, you know, so check out the resources. It's a way, if you're a teacher, you can, you know, let your classes see this and, you know, find a way to uh, give them some resources to at least get them creatively stimulated in a different way. So uh, make sure that you stick around at the end of this uh, masterclass today. We're doing a live performance of our song Spaz. Uh, we didn't even play it at the Easter uh, celebration. Right. So, you know, we wanted to just dust it off real quick and play it. So make sure you stay around. It's after the Q&A. Also, get your questions together. We do an AME at the end of every masterclass. And uh, if you don't already follow it, follow us at Black Violin on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook is Black Violin Music, I believe. So, and if you are watching us on YouTube live or recorded, then make sure that you tell a friend and press subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Or thumbs up, you? man. You know. So, um, so today, you know, this is uh, basically like jump training and composition level two. So this is like our level two masterclass. So if you watched us last week, we want to com- compound on some of the things that we talked about last week. And um, and the first thing is really about finding your sound. That's what really what this whole masterclass is about, is about being able to have you pick up your instrument and play whatever you feel at whatever moment. Um, again, you know, scales, arpeggios, all the things that your teachers are teaching you right now are very important in that. Mm-hmm. But... Also, what is equally important is just that you trying it and figuring it out on your own. So last week we started with kind of um, in, a, in our drum training class, we started with just finding a way for you to freestyle. So it's like, you know, you know, a uh, quick, quick review for those that didn't see. Well, you know. And if we just have you play a G major scale, let's say oh, we did D major, actually. Whatever you want. 
not using those notes. <laughs> so that's how we started last week's class. It's just about taking just something as simple, you know, as a D major scale, D minor scale. And then once you kind of understand, well, okay, that's the framework that you're working with, then what can you do to make it different and make it, you know, make it yours, you know? Um, you know, there is some kind of framework as far as the scales and everything like that. But once you understand what rules, what's the rules of the game, then you know how to play it, you know? Right. So. You know, um, one of the things that we were talking about about that is just about, you know, that's how we find ourselves and how we create our own sound. Um, but the, the, the first part I think that, you know, maybe we take for granted is just finding a key, right? Right. So it's like, you know, for us, we started off by playing hip-hop songs, um, like that, that big, you know, Biggie song or big Jay-Z song, Beyonce song. We started off by doing that, and then, but the only, only way you can do it is trying to figure out how to find the key. So right. For us, I think it's just really natural. I don't know. I think it's experience just trying to do it. This experience is knowing the skills and, and just honestly having an ear for it. Like, for instance, you put a song on that's in C. I don't know. I just I can kind of hear it. But but in the beginning, it wasn't always like that. I think uh, in the beginning, if something was in C, then I'm just kind of like searching. <laughs> So if that's the root of the uh, the song. If that's a note root, then that's the key. You know? So let's even let's do that, right? So you know, let's do an experiment. So I'm gonna play a note, and then I want I know you can kind of just jump to the note, right? right. <laughs> but I want you to kind of figure it out and let the students see how you find a note, like when you're just starting out, right? So let's try this note. There it is, right there. You guys try it. It is a open note. <laughs> it's an open string. Did you get D? That's D, right? right? Now, how did you do that, though? Like, you know, what what what's the science behind that? I basically just use my ears. You know what I mean? I just kind of I started with an A, right? Ah, oh, that feels good. But it's it crazy. Like the but go down just a little bit, though. Like, that is kind of. That's like the worst kind of sound. Like that's like, it's painful. And there it is. Uh. <laughs> so it's almost like, you know, um, it gets really, when you're trying to find the note, if you're really close, it's really, um, there's a lot of friction, you know? Right. And in music, they call that dissonance. And there's dissonance and resonance. So, you know, when you're near the dissonance, that's why you know it's it's kind of close, right. you know? And it just keep going either, you know, got either higher or lower to try to find that note. So let's try another one of those. And we'll do... That is an A, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that's how you do it. It's like even if you're um, above or below the note, you can just kind of find your way to it. Right. And if it gets really, if there's a lot of friction, if you start to hear that, it sounds really, really tough. Honestly, that means you're close. Right. <laughs> so exactly. just adjust your finger lower or higher. And then once you find it, then you're like, okay, it's an A. And then if you know an A major scale, A minor scale, then you could play along with that same song. So, I mean, a good homework assignment would be to try to do it with your favorite song. Like whatever song you're listening to, whether it's, you know, you know, Beyonce or Pop Smoke or, <laughs> you know, you know, J. Cole, whatever you're listening to, try it with your favorite song and try to find the key to that song. We love to see, you know, and if you do, make sure that you, uh, you know, post or you let us know somehow um, how you did it. You could, uh, anything that we do in this, we're going to do hashtag BVMC. So if you do a tweet or anything about it, um, we'd love to see you. Tell us what's your favorite songs and then try to figure out what key that is in another right. time. That'd be and also play the scale of that key. Exactly. That's how you do it. And that's how we started, just figuring out, playing beats and stuff that we liked and trying to figure out how to make it 
vibe with us. So right. that, that's how we figured it out. So, you know, so once you figure out that, um, that, that, that key to the, to the song, so like, so let's say it's A, right? The thing is, is that we wanted to kind of, you know, there's a, a part of music that's called music theory, and it's just, it's almost a science behind it. Like, music mm-hmm. is a science, just like everything else. And the science is almost related to how you feel. Like, you know, just like we were doing um, dissonance. Uh, you know, if you do... That's just uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good. You know, it's just... It makes me, like, anxious. Attention. Just because... And that's just the science behind it. This is called a tritone, by the way, for those that know. But then if you just play... Oh, I feel so much better. It's like right. it just releases. So why is that? And really the science behind it is just it's a chord progression. So um, the simplest way we can talk about it is just like if you know a D major scale already, right? If you know a D major scale, there are parts of the scale that are the most important, right? They're sort of like the building blocks of the scale. And you guys know them as arpeggios. That's basically the building blocks of the scale, right? And in, a, in that arpeggio, the, 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 the most important parts are, if you just don't play the second note, the most important parts are... Um, so if you just leave, instead of... You play... So what that is, is that that is the key of the song. So this is in D, right? The next important note, if you're going to play in D, is the third note in the arpeggio, which is... Because that always feels like... It just feels like the finishing of something. It's just like, dum, dum, like, you know, it's the right. end. And it's like that note really, really wants to go to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the tonic. So... So when you, well, why am I saying this? So when you use this in freestyling, for instance, so, so if we do the same thing, give me like a D major scale. Sorry, yo, man. <laughs> I was thinking of the other one. <laughs> so now most songs don't just sit here on the same note. Most songs are gonna. say that because like when you're using it now like okay well when you will start making up different things like you know if you're doing something in d major or d minor now you know you can go to the a all the time
jump training. This is D let's switch it to D major for us. So we're gonna do D major. Play anything you want in D major using what we talked about today. You could do D major, you could do D minor, we talked about that too. Talk, play with dissonance and resonance. Um, Up with something? That was very different for me. I normally don't play in major, so. <laughs> <laughs> so now with this vibe that's going on here, we challenge everybody to come up with just a simple melody because the next part of this masterclass, we want to talk about songwriting and how you come up with the song. So let's do something. Let's say D major, keep it simple, and come up with your own melody. So Will's gonna give us what his melody would be on this. Something simple. So remember that melody real quick, Will. So, you know, if we... So now if we take that melody and want to write a song, what do we do with that? <laughs> where, do you, where do you begin? If that's the melody that you want to write a full song with, where, right. where do you begin? And we can review a little bit of what we talked about last week as well. Well, I'll first I would um, put that bass line, that first initial, dun -dun, with, the, with the D. I would put that into whether it's Ableton and um, and that melody that I just came up with. I would take that and kind of build from there, you know? And that's a cool little catchy little melody. That might even be, um, if I'm writing lyrics to it, that might even be something that I might use for the, in terms of the progression for the song. Right, so it could be like, I love to dance and I love to play. I love to dream because I love to stay at home because it's coronavirus outside. I don't want to get sick, so I'm staying indoors. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that could be the hook, you know what I mean? That could be the hook, and then I can, as I'm building, I need to figure out something. I need to build a song, so I need to figure out what the verse would be and what the melody for that verse. Well, so would be. what's a verse, and what's a, what's the parts of the song? You know, first of all, especially like a pop song, like so, say you know something that Drake right. would do, or you know, what, what, how does he put together music? Well, most songs are telling stories, right? Well, you know, all songs really are telling stories. So, the verses are typically kind of like, you know, the words that are kind of like connecting you with the main theme of that of that story, which is the hook, right? Let's mm -hmm. say the hook is basically, I'm telling a story about a kid that's walking along the streets, right? And he's trying to get in, he's trying to get home because he's lost, mm -hmm. right? So that's the main thing of that story. He's lost, right? So every time I come back to the hook, he's lost, he's lost, right? He's lost. That's the main thing of that. So mm -hmm. the verses is telling that story of how 
he became to this situation, how he got to the situation, how mm-hmm. he got lost. So let's say the verse starts off like, you know, he was just laying there and he thought, hmm, I think I'm going to go get some ice cream. And he went to get some ice cream and he saw a dog and he started chasing the dog and he got lost. Boom. That's the first verse. That's the first right? verse, right. Then the hook is like, he's lost, he's lost. <laughs> <laughs> then the second verse is telling you how he got to where he is now, which is he found the dog and he found the ice cream shop. He got his ice cream and boom, boom, boom. So you're basically telling the story. And um, and however that story goes, wherever it goes, you want to, at the end of the day, that hook is something that, to me, the hook needs to be something that whenever it comes on, people automatically um, – are associated with the story. It's yeah. almost like when you hear the hook, boom, I kind of know what the, what the story is all about. You know what I mean? And yeah. the verses are kind of like just the, the pieces in there that are just telling you further, t- telling you more what the story is about, you know? Yeah. And then also just like, you know, musically, like I think that the, the hooks and they also call them choruses. So it's really verses and choruses to, you know, for this discussion. Right. And then, in you know, I always find in the hooks that, that or the choruses, they, it's always very, very, like you said, melodically memorable too. It's like right. normally you could just sing it along or something like that. So give us an idea, like um, like maybe like um, like thinking out loud at Sharon. Like, what's the verse and what's the hook in that song? If I could remember that song. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Or even Uptown Funk, like Uptown Funk, gonna give it the me- You know what? Like, what give give the viewers an understanding of what part is this this chorus part? Okay, if I'm doing at Sharon. This is the progression, right? That's the that's the progression. Let me just sing another song, right? <laughs> what Let's about Uptown Funk? Like, what is Uptown Funk? What, what part of Uptown Funk is the chorus? What part is the verse? Or any song that they would know? Uh, let's say Up That Fountain, uh, the part where... Um, Don't believe me, just watch. Right. Da, 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 da. Don't believe me, just watch that part. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of the song. Like, I need a song that I'm really familiar with. But the hook is the the chorus is the it's the part that repeats over and over, and it's the it's normally the part that's really really simple, something that you can sing to. A lot of the songs that you like are really really have really really simple choruses and really choruses that you can sing along to. And normally, like I said, the verses are just the the thing that's kind of like connecting the chorus. And uh, together, that's kind of like a thread that's, that's kind of threading everything together. Yeah, and then once you've kind of got the melodies established, you can kind of add layers to it. So I always think that the verse is sort of like Will says, it tells the story, it sets it up, and then the chorus is something that comes on over and over and over, and that's the part that you probably know. The song, the part of the song that you sing to every day and that, you, that everyone knows is the chorus, and they call it the hook because it hooks you. That's what brings you in. And um, and those are normally a little layered a little bit more. So um, if I did the if I did the uh, do that same vibe again, and then you come up with that same melody again, how would you layer it to make it feel like what's what's a verse, what's a hook? Well, if I could hear that melody again, Boom. basically. Um, if I'm doing something like this, right?
take a lot of that stuff out. That's kind of like the, the chorus part. It's to be the, you know, you want, if you're working on the verse, you want something, because you're telling a story, so you want to be able to have something that is not so busy, something that has a lot of space that you can kind of like tell a story. So this part, I would kind of like, if I'm playing, because the way that we approach music is if I'm soloing, that's my verse, right? So then I would just play something like this. created that right here just to get, kind of give you guys a, a understanding of the parts of a song um last week we reviewed what makes a good song just like trying to get something with an emotional response that to me felt really like an awesome emotional response like i felt right. like i don't know just like it felt hopeful it felt right. Right. um like i don't know it, it, it was like a main or major minor thing so yeah, it felt like sad but happy at the same time right. and that's always my favorite thing when when artists do that and uh it just had some some really cool layers to it and um we want to just give you guys sort of an idea how we create and how you guys can take some of these things that we're talking about and figure out how to make your own music, man. Right. Make your own vibes. Create like, your own voice. This is this yeah. is what this is about. Um, you know, uh, we want you guys to kind of try something out for us. You know, so using everything that we did today, we want you guys to you know create a melody using the techniques that we we're talking about and record a quick video of yourself with an original melody, any original melody. It could be in D major, D minor. It could be any key that you want. But whatever you feel like is that, that heartbeat of yours, just, you know, you know, just make up whatever you feel and record it. And if you record it, we want you to want you to post it on Twitter, Instagram, wherever you post it. Just make sure you do hashtag BVMC, short for Black Violin Masterclass. Or if you don't have um, social media, you can send it to blackviolintv at gmail.com. We would love to see them. We'll post them. We'll, you know, let everybody see your, your own creation, your own vibes, and what you're learning from our master class here. And um, so it's not, we won't call it homework. It's just sort of self-study, you know. <laughs> play play 15 minutes without any music. Just pull out the violin. Don't even pull out music. You can practice some scales or something and just come up with a melody, you know. play Start off by playing a scale, any scale that you like, and then use those notes as whatever melody that you want to, to create your own vibe, you know. I want to give you something to uh, to kind of, take home with uh take home and just kind of figure out and come up with your own thing so you know people ask us all the time what how did you how did you were able to play for as long as you have and and this is this is what we did you know what i'm saying we made this instrument made it made it ours right and it was fun to play you know Mm -hmm. it was fun to come to class yeah we would do the mozart and beethoven's and all that kind of stuff but like we were always thinking about ways to make this speak for us for us you know what i mean made it fun and this is what we did, you know what I mean? And um, not really thinking that we would be where we are now, but um, this had a lot to do with our longevity in terms of playing this instrument for as long as we have, you know? Yeah, and, you know, and like Will said, man, we want you guys to do that. Like, I think about moments where I would have quit this instrument long ago because, you know, it, it didn't speak to me in moments, you know? And then I think once we kind of figured out how to do our own thing and create our own music, then – we, you know, now 30 years later, we're still playing. So. Right, right. <laughs> so that is the vibe. So, um, 
Yeah, so um, that's what we got for today. Um, we'll take any questions if anyone has any questions for us. And while we'll be doing questions, I'm going to be changing my battery on my violin because it died. <laughs> so let's do that. Um, don't worry. Don't mind me while I'm unscrewing my violin. We're going to play Spaz at the end of this, so make sure that you guys stick around. And we're going to play Spaz off our album, Take the Stairs. So any questions? What's my favorite song to practice off the radio? Um, Spotify, maybe? Uh, it's the um, Take the Stairs album. Yeah, go get it. <laughs> I love practicing those songs. Those songs are amazing. I love those songs. <laughs> but uh, for me, I like to just, um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll just turn on one of my favorite songs or one of my favorite albums and just play, just play, right? And sometimes I'll just play it in the studio while I'm cleaning or adjusting something. And I just pick up my viola and start plucking, start playing. And um, so for me, it's just, man, whatever that moment brings me, you know, whatever that vibe is at that moment. It could be a song. It could be an old song. It could be a new song. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. It just as long as I'm playing. And that's the thing. As long as you're playing every day and you're having fun, that's all that matters. Absolutely, <laughs> all, all the, the time. time I start with pizzicato, <laughs> all the time. It's 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 what um in the way that I do it too. You know, like one of one of my favorite artists is is uh, George Benson, and um he's a guitarist. Look him up, George Benson. And um I used to try to imitate him all the time. You know, and the way that I pluck, the way that I pluck now, I kind of I pluck like a guitarist, right? So. For me, it's just so easy to just, when I'm creating and I'm being creative, to just pick up my viola and start plucking it like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> little, little George Benson plug. But um, so, yeah, so plucking is just such an essential part of my creativity, man. I just love it. I, I love doing it. I love how this instrument wasn't really, you don't think of string instrument as someone that could, pluck it in a way that it sounds like a guitar it's like, like a, it sounds like an acoustic guitar i have like distortion here that can I you can show them some of the stuff that you do because like you pluck it but you do so many other things that it's like it's a great source for creativity well for me i have i have a lot of cool little pedals here that i mess with y'all can hear that little distortion thing It's just helpful to start plucking. It just gives it a different tone and a different vibe. And I have this uh, synth pedal right here. I got my loop station going. I can't just keep giving y'all everything, <laughs> man. Come on. <laughs> but, yeah, so plucking is such an essential part. Like, I start plucking before I start, you know, bowing a lot of times. Yeah. You know, obviously, when I'm tuning, I tune first. And, you know, I use my bow. But uh, plucking is just such a huge part of uh, our creativity and how we uh, approach. And not for nothing, music. I remember when we were growing up, our teacher, when I was, uh, our high school teacher, shout out to Mr. Miles. You know, we'd be plucking, like, in between, you know, when right. you say something, they were like, you're always plucking on this. Show. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> and we pluck it like guitars. We never pluck it. Right. He never liked to pluck it like a regular violinist. And he used to always tell us all the time, like, that's not good, that's not good. But, you know, we ended up making a whole career out of that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, of course, you guys should listen to your teachers, but, you know, your heart knows what you want. So Right. I mean, obviously, if you're playing um, a classical piece and there's a plucking section, you know, do it the right way. Well, do it the way that <laughs> I guess Mozart wanted to be done. But when you're at home, just plug it how you want to plug it, man. Where do we get all of our equipment? Um, various places. Shouts out to uh, Sweetwater. Joseph at Sweetwater. We get a lot of our stuff at Sweetwater. We get a lot of stuff at Guitar Center. And then we got a plenty um, of sponsors that um and that endorse us. Codable, right. Yamaha. Eventide. Uh, Eventide is a big one for us. Um, so, you know, we have um you know, Glasser Violins does stuff for it. Glasser Bows. 
uh, the Dario strings. So we use we use all kind of people, and um, they've been just awesome, you know. Just um, all of them have been cool, and we also like just trying out different stuff all the time. We're always looking for ways to make this instrument feel and sound, and um, and and just kind of look different, you know. So I was eBay. I mean, everywhere. <laughs> So this violin, most violins, um, electric violins, and, um, you know, they have a uh, pickup in it. And this one is an active pickup in it, so most of them do. And they have uh, a battery that needs to be changed every so often, uh, every month or so, just to, uh, just to make sure that it's powered on the violin so that the power can get to the, the, the board. And I'm having problems with this battery right now as i try to make <laughs> make this work i don't know what's wrong with it but um but yeah that's what most most you know guitars have them basses have them they're different batteries no, some, sometimes most of the time they're nine volts this time it's uh, a triple a so you know let me see right. how that works how do you choose a tempo um um again it it it, it all depends on what it is you're trying to accomplish with this composition, right? If you're if you're trying to come up with a, a pop tune, right, and and you listen to pop songs on the radio, I mean, you, you probably gotta just listen to the tempo and kind of start from there, right? Um, I listen to a lot of old school R and B and and a lot of a lot of a lot of jazz and, and funk, so my natural a lot of blues too. So my natural tempo is gonna go in that direction. So the tempo. Again, this is all about your vibe and what you're trying to do, your voice, finding your voice and finding your melody. That's what it's all about. Once you do that, I mean, the, the, the tempo will come because of just who you are. You know, if, you kind of, if you're a person listening listen to blues all day long, and mm -hmm. you're going to naturally, your tempo is naturally going to go to that vibe. You know what I mean? If it's, if it's pop and it's just like, <laughs> then that's where it's going to go, you know? <laughs> and then, you know, not another, like, you know, and different vibes have different tempos. Is like Will says that he's right. Um, sometimes, like, depending on what I'm creating, like, you know, I, 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 next week we're going to talk about a little bit more about, like, even just how you come up with things. Like, I'm a kind of person that likes to really know what this is going to not sound like necessarily or not, but I know what feel I'm going for, you know, before I even start anything. So sometimes, like, say I'm like, look, I want to dance. I want something that I can dance to, you know. Then I may look for a song that I like that has something I can dance to and then take that BPM and I'll be like, yeah, I want it to do you know, I wanted to feel like this, you know, or like mm -hmm. we were talking about Uptown Funk earlier, you know, you could take like the, the, the BPM of it, the tempo of it, and then that you'd be like, hey, I want something that feels like that, you know, and mm -hmm. I use those type of things as barometers for what I'm going for, and what I what I want to feel like, right. you know, what, what I want the music to feel like. Um, don't know what is I want it to sound like before I start, but I have a good idea of what I'm what feel I'm going for. So I hope that helps. Hey, Mrs. Wall student. Hey, Chelsea's Wall. You know, um, how do we stay motivated? Because we have to do s the social distancing and, you know, trying to abide by, which you guys should definitely do. I think doing this, man, doing this master class definitely gets us motivated, um, gets me to pick up my viola and, and work on some scales and and um, I do a lot of uh, just just creating music in my house, in my room, my little studio, my little setup. And sometimes I bring my son into the room, and he just loves to bang on stuff. So <laughs> sometimes I get a lot of inspiration from there. I think just just being proactive and, and not letting the idea that you can't go outside and, and really do some of the things that you know would normally do, don't let that get to you. And um, and try to find motivation from different places, like listening to you know. It, now we have so much time, right? I mean, there's so much time to do a lot of different things that you didn't have time to do. So I'm listening to different albums that I really didn't have time to listen to. So I'm being inspired by different artists. I mean, there's so many different artists out there right now that are just amazing. Um, and I'm being inspired by different artists and different styles of music. So anywhere, man, I, I'm just I'm just pointing all the inspiration is from every angle and um, trying to be inspired, try to be uh, um you know, uplifted as much as I can because it, it is trying times right now. So, yeah, just finding inspiration everywhere. Yeah, I mean, same. Like, you know, we're, we, uh, we've we been doing this together for, oh, I was thinking about it. We, we started really 17 years ago, so we've, we've been playing together for a long time. 
but in a lot of ways we make music separately a lot anyway <laughs> so you know so it's like we'll kind of you know come up with a vibe or whatever and then we'll kind of get together when it's formed so for us you know we see each other only during the this master class and even that we're still pretty far apart and uh, right. but uh but yeah like we just like i think that you know it's a good time for you to figure out who you are as a musician um, you can make music with others later, but to figure out who you are truly, what's your heartbeat, what's your melody that w- when you wake up in the morning is just there. I think that that's the way to use this social distance, distancing right. time to figure out yourself, you know, creatively and otherwise. Um, and, and that's what I'm doing. Just, you know, Absolutely. just trying to get to the bottom of who I really am as a musician, as a man, as a father, husband, everything, you know, <laughs> so that's, that's a good point. Are. This is the time to really figure out who you are, because, you know, I think this social distancing thing is really, you know, opening a lot of, you know, um, bringing out a lot of, you know, skeletons in the, in the closet, so to speak, you know, and I think, I think we need to just approach those situations with, um, with strength, right? I mean, because it can make you, it can make you crumble, right? Yeah. But I think um, we have to, we got to, this is the time to kind of approach it and, and kind of take a hold of it, you know? And uh, hopefully, at the end of this, we can come out on top, you know? Yeah. Any others? Last question. Oh, the resources um, after every single master class um, probably give us, like, maybe a couple of hours because every master class is different, and we kind of have an idea of what we want to say, but uh, the resources are available on blackviolin.net forward slash masterclass. And um, there you can find, um, you'll find like a YouTube link to, you know, some of the keys that we use. Um, Don Hicks always throws together um, anything that he sees that he feels like makes sense that, um, you know, for teachers out there that your students could use. So again, blackviolin.net forward slash uh, masterclass. Cool beans. So thank you guys. So don't forget to send in your videos, you know, of your melody, whatever v- melody that you kind of wake up with, like whatever melody you come up with, make sure that you send uh, those videos to us or um, at Black Violin TV at gmail.com. Or if you post them, just post them. Hashtag v- BVMC, short for Black Violin Masterclass. Um, make sure that you follow us at Black Violin on Instagram and Twitter, uh, Facebook.com forward slash Black Violin Music. And if you are watching live, make sure if you haven't already, subscribe, share, tell a friend. And um, we'll see you guys next Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 Pacific. And this one here is Spaz. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you guys very much. We'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you. Black Violin Masterclass. Peace and love, y'all.